City Veterans Commission, welcome to a beautiful Veterans Day in the great city of Baltimore. We're here to honor the courage and pay gratitude to the sacrifice of those who have served our nation. I cannot imagine a better city in the world to do this in than the great city of Baltimore where our nation was in reality founded. A little, 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 little personal thing there, because the Star Spangled Banner and all come from right here. Because we won the great battles that gave this nation uh, its sustenance. We are a city of neighbors, helping neighbors to build a stronger community and a strong nation. Today we honor our veterans who have selflessly given everything to further that vision. Now, it is with great privilege that I'm able now to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Legs, a Gulf War veteran. Lieutenant Colonel Legs retired from the Army Reserves in 2007 after a distinguished 21-year career that included deployments to Southwest Asia and service during Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm, as well as Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. He has received the Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, the Southwest Asia Service Medal with three bronze service stars, the Liberation of Karak Medal, and his unit received the Meritorious Unit Commendation Award. He now works here in the great city of Baltimore as a city planner and graciously accepted our offer to be here with us today. Please help me welcome Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Legs. Thank you, Delegate Davis, and good morning. Good morning, Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake, distinguished guests. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask you all to rise for the presentation of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the National Anthem. Please join us in a moment of silence as the colors are presented. Colors are being presented by the Baltimore City Fire Department, the Maryland Guard Marching Unit, and the American Legion Post 285. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen.
You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the Western High School Choir directed by Miss Robin Page. How about a round of applause? The Western High School Choir. Ladies and gentlemen, we are blessed today to be joined by Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Julius Jefferson to lead us in prayer. Reverend Jefferson is the former Deputy Chief of the Air National Guard Chaplain Service, is currently the pastor of Heritage United Church of Christ here in Baltimore. His career in the Army began in 1969 with the U.S. Army's Infantry Division in the Republic of Vietnam. He has served numerous leadership roles with outstanding achievements along the way uh, to include his current position. Today he will lead us in prayer and perform the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Julius Jefferson. Good morning. Let us pray. Oh God, we call upon you to be present with us today as we honor our veterans, worthy men and women who gave their best when called upon to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. We pray that you would bless them for their selfless service in the struggle to preserve the freedoms that we cherish and enjoy. Bless those who served with honor and distinction on the battlefields of Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima, Sao Su and Sasu, Long Tan and Dark To. Bless those who served in the Iraq and Afghanistan and in all the wars and conflicts of this nation. We thank you for those who laid down their lives for the cause of freedom and justice for all. We thank you for the brave souls who have borne and bear the scars and sufferings of war. Encourage and heal those in hospitals or mending at home. Guard those in need or trouble. As we honor our veterans, we remember those who are deployed far from home. We ask your blessings upon them, especially those who are serving in a war zone. We pray for the men and women who are serving at home station. Hold safely in your hands the spouses, children, and family members of all our military personnel. And at the end of the day, we ask you to bring our troops home to a joyful reunion and a tranquil life at home. Give to us your people, grateful hearts, and a united will to honor our veterans and hold them always in our love and prayers until your world is perfected in the peace and war ceases to be a blight upon the earth. Bless our leaders, especially the commander in chief of the armed forces of these United States of America, Give unto him the wisdom to navigate the way that leads to peace and tranquility for us and the larger community of nations. Now, Lord, bless this ceremony, bless its participants, and those who have gathered to honor and remember our veterans. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to recognize distinguished guests that we have with us today, United States Senator Ben Cardin, <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown, our very own Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake, former delegate, Chairman of the Baltimore City Veterans Commission, Clarence Tiger Davis, Retired Lieutenant General Stephen H. Blum, the keynote speaker, former Deputy Commander of the United States Northern Command, former Chief of National Guard Bureau. We also have with us Alan Walden, who will be our Master of Ceremonies. Dennis Smith, Director, VA Maryland Healthcare System. The Reverend, again, Julius Jefferson, Heritage United Church of Christ. <laughs> Representing U.S. Senator Barbara Mikulski, Justin Hayes, Deputy Projects Director. We have from our elected of office, State's Attorney Greg Bernstein, <laughs> Sheriff John Anderson, Controller Joan Pratt, General Assembly members to include 
Senator Werner Jones Rodwell, Senator Nathaniel McFadden, Senator Catherine Pugh, Delegate Nina Harper, City Council Representative Jack or James Kraft, Councilman Brandon Scott, Councilman Robert Curran, Councilman Nick Mosby, Councilwoman Sharon Green Middleton, Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark. With us today from the Baltimore City Veterans Commission, Maxine Canty, Melvin Stoops, Kate Conroy, Glormo Birmingham, Robert Guy, who's also organizer of today's events. Major Dennis Smith from the Police Commissioner's Office. Active military members that we have with us here today. Commander Andrew Caulfield, Naval Operations Support Center right here in Baltimore. Brigadier General Linda Singh, Assistant Justin General, Adjutant General Army Maryland National Guard. Brigadier General Allison Solomon, Assistant Adjutant General Air Maryland Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Kohler, Public Affairs Officer Maryland Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Frank McClinic, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Christopher Baseris, Coast Guard, Contingency Planning Preparedness Division. We also have with us distinguished guests include General Edward Ballard, who's retired. Janice Chance, Chaplain, Gold Star Mothers. Jack Pierce, Director of MacVets. Major William Hurt, the 231st Transportation Battalion. Melvin Thorpe, Most Worshipful Grand Master of the Prince Hall of Masons. Tessa Hill Austin, Director, Baltimore Branch, NAACP. Howard Gillis, Lee Douglas, Montford Port Marines, Maryland Chapter. Mr. Lee Douglas is the original Montford Port Marine. We have with us also Philip Mundley, representing the Maryland Veterans Administration, Secretary in Correctional Services. Add to that list our very own Miss Maryland, Miss Christine Denny. We also have Calliope Pathermos, Deputy Chief Staff, Baltimore City Department, the Mayor's Office of Economic Development. We'd also like to recognize Robert Maloney, Deputy Chief Emergency Management, and his staff for assisting in today's event, Police Commissioner Anthony Batts, Acting Fire Chief Jeffrey Siegel, and Colonel Fox, DPW. War Memorial Commission members, Edward Bauer, Wilson Thornton, David Clements, Norman Johnson, Earl Nesbitt. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause. It is now, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to introduce our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Alan Walden. In 2005, Alan was chosen by the Society of Professional Journalists to receive the Helen Thomas Lifetime Achievement Award. Mr. Walden has also been honored with the Patrick Henry Award of the National Guard Association of the United States, the Meritorious Service Medal of the Maryland National Guard, the Public Service Award of the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution and the Good Citizenship Medal of the Sons of the American Revolution. In 1994, Allo was commissioned Colonel of the Maryland Line, and by order of the Secretary of the Army, he was named Honorary Member of the 175th Infantry Regiment. Mr. Walden serves as Chairman Demetrius of the Friends of Fort McHenry, as President Demetrius, Presumptive of the Baltimore Council of the Navy League, of the United States and as an associate professor of mass communications at the College of Notre Dame. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please join me in welcoming a longtime friend of the city of Baltimore and a friend of the Veterans Committee. It would not be Veterans Day in the city of Baltimore here today without him, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alan Walden. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow veterans. I say that very proudly because if you wore the uniform, you have every reason to be proud. And if you're a family member of anybody who wore the uniform, you have reason to be proud. Before I go on any further, with all those names, I'm going to add one more. Delegate John Carden is here as well. And so it ended. It ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in the year 1918. They called it the Great War, the war to end all wars. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way, did it? There followed World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam War, Kosovo, Bosnia, Iraq, twice, Afghanistan, the war against terrorism, and on and on it goes. And as it does, our young men and young women go off to serve us, the ones who were left behind, to serve the people of the nation, to serve the flag, by the way. And when you look at the flags, it's a little still right now. Try to remember that the flag is not a confection of colors. It is the very essence of the American spirit. It is the totem. It tells people who we are, who we were, and who we hope we ever shall be. And when you see the flag flutter, it isn't the breeze that's making the flag move. It's the breath of a veteran that makes the flag move. There was a meeting this past weekend in Ohio of the last survivors of the Doolittle Raiders. There were 80 of them who took part in that raid during World War II in 1942. There are four left. They're all in their 90s. Three of them were able to be there. One of them was too infirm. They drank from a special flask of a special brandy to remember what they had done in World War II. And there was a ceremony also that the National Veterans Art Museum in Chicago. Many of you may not know about that. When you walk in the door, you hear what sound like wind chimes. And then you look up. And you see 58,000 dog tags suspended from the ceiling making that sound. The dog tags of every man and every woman we lost in Vietnam. Quite an extraordinary experience. So here we are, again gathered on Armistice Day, Veterans Day, and in the midst of the bicentennial anniversary of the War of 1812. Heard it mentioned earlier that the Korean War was the Forgotten War. Well, the War of 1812 was the Korean War of the 19th century. It's the one most people forget. But as was also mentioned, it gave birth to the poem and four verses that became our national anthem many years later. And remember, always remember, that our second war of independence was won here in Baltimore. It's now my pleasure to introduce a, a good friend, someone you all know and someone I have had the pleasure to work with on a number of projects through the years. Senator Ben Cardin has always been a strong supporter of veterans and an important voice in Maryland and beyond for U.S. service members. We all know Senator Cardin's tireless work ethic and support of Maryland, and the same has been true 
of his work with veterans and their families. That's the official introduction here. Ben is more than that. He's a real, solid citizen. He believes deeply in what he does, and he believes deeply in the magnitude and the majesty of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator Ben Cardin. Our community has many treasures uh, that we really cherish. One of those treasures is Alan Walden. We are indeed very fortunate to have a person of his patriotism and the manner in which he can communicate feelings I think we all share. So Alan Walden, thank you for being the person that you are and thank you for being here today. It's a glorious day, beautiful day. And it's Veterans Day, which means it's a holiday. And people around our state and nation do many things on Veterans Day. But you're doing what we should be doing on Veterans Day. You're here. And I can't tell you how proud I am to see all of you out here showing our respect for our veterans and saying that we want to make sure that we take every opportunity to thank those who have literally given us our freedom. To Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake and the city officials, thank you for continuing this great tradition on Veterans Day here in Baltimore City. To Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown, thank you for your service to our country in the military, and thank you for your leadership with the state officials to recognize the 470,000 Maryland veterans, and that we're going to live up to our commitment to always honor our veterans. And, and, to, and to my friend, the person who I serve with in the Maryland General Assembly, Tiger Davis, thank you for being the person that you are, and we are very, very proud of, of your continuation of the record of public service. I just want to give you quick greetings on behalf of the federal delegation, my colleague in the Senate, Senator Mikulski, Congressman Cummings, and Sarbanes and Rupersberger. We're very proud of our veteran community. On a tough day in Washington, and I had one this past week, what I normally, what I like to do, is I'd like to take a walk in the mall and walk past the World War II Memorial, walk past the Vietnam Memorial, walk past the Korean War Memorial and reflect on what our veterans, our soldiers have done in order to protect our way of life. I have the honor of serving in the United States Senate and to be able to speak out on any issue at any time and have a spotlight put on it. I can only do that because of the men and women who served in our military who gave us our freedom and protect our freedom to this day. And America is a beacon of hope for people all over the world. Thank you, veterans, for making that possible. It was your sacrifices that allowed us to enjoy those freedoms. So I come here today to say, on behalf of a grateful nation, the way we show our thanks is to make sure that we give you the very best health care in the world. Thank you, Dennis Smith, for what you do at the Veterans Administration. we got to make sure you have the the resources to do that. We say to our returning warriors, we thank you for making sure there's a job when you return to America so that you can enjoy this great nation. And we say to those who have served, another way to honor you is to make sure the men and women who are serving today have the resources and support of this country to carry out their critical mission. I am so proud to represent you in the United States Senate. The city of Baltimore has a strong past, and thanks to the leadership of Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake, Baltimore is ready for a strong future. The mayor has commanded her troops, so to speak, and laid out a strategic plan for building a stronger, safer, healthier Baltimore over the coming years. Her foresight and understanding of what make her a great mayor 
and will undoubtedly make her tenure an unforgettable turning point in the history of a city. She is an unwavering supporter of veterans, the Veterans Commission, and this ceremony and the preceding parade. Please thank her for making sure today is a special day in Baltimore as we introduce Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to be here. Alan, thank you for the kind introduction and for lending your time and your talents to this ceremony every year. I want to thank Tiger Davis and the rest of the uh, Baltimore City Veterans Commission for serving with pride and making this event better and better every single year. I want to thank the elected officials who have gathered with us today to celebrate and acknowledge our veterans uh, from every part of government. And, I, and as we are uh, celebrating and recognizing veterans, I want to do a few things. I know that m there are many members of, uh, many veterans who are now, con they continue to, pro to protect and serve as members of our uh, police department and fire, fi um, fire department. So if we have any veterans that are members of the police and fire, would they please stand? Or wave your hand to be recognized. Thank you. Now, I know we also have members of my administration who uh, currently work for the city of Baltimore and who are veterans. If I could have them please stand or wave their hands to be recognized. Thank you very much, all of our city employees. Thank you very much. Good, we see a few of them to today. So today we come together to honor our military veterans who have fought to protect the ideals and the values which on which our nation was founded. From the Revolutionary War to the Battle of Baltimore to the current conflicts, our veterans have stood in harm's way over dozens of wars. They serve so many uh, so that we may enjoy the peace and security in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Today, our thoughts are with the men and women of our military who, with great personal sacrifice, are serving in Iraq and Afghanistan and posts around the world to preserve our freedom and protect our national security. As we witness the courageous and professional efforts of our armed forces engaged in combat, we are all reminded of the tremendous sacrifices our veterans have made on our behalf. We can never do enough for our nation's veterans. To honor our veterans, we must keep the promises we have made to them. We must care for those who have become injured in service to our country. We must honor and remember those who have died. And in that spirit, I'd like to take a moment to remember a World War II veteran and a retiree from the Baltimore Fire Department, a captain who passed away last week at the age of 96. Thomas M. Bailey Sr. enlisted in the Army Air Force um, in, in, in April of 1942. He participated in five campaigns in Australia and in New Guinea. Following the war, Mr. Bailey entered the Air Force Reserves and then the Air, the Air National Guard, and in 1947, he joined the Baltimore City Fire Department and retired in 1982. As captain and as instructor of the Fire Academy, Mr. Bailey was a veterans advocate serving at posts and state and national levels and national levels in numerous veterans organizations. He was also named in 1987 Maryland Veteran of the Year. Mr. Bailey served as chairman of the Joint uh, Veterans Committee of Maryland and as well as chairman and commissioner of the Maryland Veterans Home Commission. He helped establish a Charlotte, home, uh, Charlotte Hall, Hall Veterans Home near Leonardtown. His life is an example of the extraordinary commitment that so many of our veterans bring to our communities beyond their military service. Our, our veterans continue to be leaders of our community. My condolences to his family, friends, and former colleagues as we remember his service. Today, I also have the honor of introducing an amazing person who embodies the example that Mr. Bailey set. Our lieutenant governor is a veteran of the highest ranking, the highest ranking elected official. One day I'm going to get that right. It's a little mouthful. Highest ranking elected official in the country who has served in active duty in Iraq. He continues to make me proud every day with his leadership. He is a shining example of what happens when a veteran remembers that your tour of duty may be over, but your service to the country can continue and continue with pride. 
His career in the military has given him a special insight into the needs of our veterans and their families, and he's taken that, that insight and made it advocacy for our veterans in Maryland. He has championed legislation to care for the behavioral health of veterans, transitioning from combat into their communities, establishing special funding for veterans, business loan programs, and created academic scholarships for veterans and their family members. And in uh, the end, the Lieutenant Governor oversees BRAC, which is helping 28,000 military families move to Baltimore, hopefully helping me get to my number of 10,000 families here in Baltimore City. We are so grateful that he chose to once again celebrate and commemorate Veterans Day here with us. Can we please give a warm welcome to our Maryland Lieutenant Governor, Anthony Brown. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. And you know, Madam Mayor, that's what I love so much about veterans because uh, each and uh, every one of us uh, has answered a call uh, to duty a call placed by our country and have demonstrated a willingness to serve our nation. But what I really, really uh, admire about veterans is that when we come home and I look out and I see each and every one of you, we continue to serve our nation in communities across the country. So I want to thank uh, my fellow veterans for the difference that you continue to make day in and day out. Veterans caring for veterans and veterans making a tremendous difference in communities across Maryland and this nation. So thank you uh, very much. I want to thank the mayor, uh, my good friend, and I want to thank you for continuing this tradition of a Veterans Day uh, celebration uh, and for your support to the uh, Baltimore Veterans Commission and the good work that they're doing uh, with uh, Delegate uh, Tiger Davis and his colleagues. Uh, I want to thank uh, General Blum and uh, both active and retired military who are here today, all of the distinguished platform guests. And I also want to uh, thank Senator Ben Cardin. And you've heard in the introduction by uh, Alan Walden, and Alan, I just continue to say I love your voice. But more importantly, I love your commitment uh, to our veterans and to our heritage and tradition of military service in Maryland. But let me just share this about Senator Ben Cardin. He really is someone who cares deeply about men and women who serve in the military and military families and veterans. And when I had the opportunity uh, to serve our nation in Iraq in 2004 and 2005, on one day I was informed that members of the Maryland congressional delegation were visiting Baghdad. Uh, so as I made my way uh, to the location where they were, I saw then Congressman Ben Cardin. And you would have imagined that Ben was there to consult with senior military officials and State Department officials about the strategic developments and the challenges uh, that we face as a nation in partnership with the people of Iraq to put that war-torn country back on its proper footing. And yes, he was there for that. But what struck me the most is that Ben's focus was much more on the well-being of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who were sent to serve our country in that country. Because when I approached Ben, the first question he asked me, and as sincere as he could possibly be, is, how are you doing? Uh, so I told him I was doing fine, and he asked me, how are the soldiers doing? You know, are we giving you the supports? How's the morale? Is the leadership doing its job? Uh, so I use this opportunity not just to acknowledge now Senator Ben Cardin, but to use this as an opportunity to express my gratitude to the senator and the civilian leadership who in our country, in this day, truly support the men and women in uniform. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. So it's great to be here. I want to thank our veterans uh, and our veteran uh, family members for being here. I want to thank you for your service, uh, your sacrifice, for your courage, 
and for, on countless occasions, putting your family life on hold so that you can serve our country. 30 years ago, when I graduated from college and received a commission as a second lieutenant, I spent a few years in Germany and through my days in Iraq, and regardless of where I served, I had the privilege of encountering men and women from all four corners of this great nation, from urban centers just like here in Baltimore City, rural communities like on Maryland's Eastern Shore, and communities in between. Men and women of different faiths and backgrounds, ethnicities and nationality, who were connected by a common bond, and that was our profound love for our country. I see our veterans here today, and I know how much you love our country, and I want to thank you for that. We have tried in the last several years, we, I say very collectively in the broadest sense, to serve our veterans who have served our country, and we've made a commitment to Maryland's veterans uh, and their families by expanding veterans' health services and making more and more resources available to veterans, expanding scholarships and a veteran uh, small business owner loans. Uh, we passed this year the Veterans Full Employment Act so that veterans returning to the community can take their military skills and training and experience and get credit on college campuses or credit towards licensing for a professional license or certification. Uh, today on Veterans Day, uh, we celebrate our veterans and we acknowledge your service. And because of that service, we commit ourselves once again uh, to doing everything that we can to serve you because we know that regardless of what we've done in the last seven years or seven decades, our work continues. And that's why uh, today I believe we need to renew our compact uh, with veterans. And that's going to make Maryland an even better place to live, work, and raise a family for the 470,000 veterans who call Maryland home. I think it starts by ensuring economic prosperity for Marylanders. So why don't we finally exempt veterans' military pension income from the state income tax. Can we get that done? And why don't we make a commitment that for those veterans who are working with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs in getting disability benefits, well-intended public servants at the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs who do work every day tirelessly to complete those benefit applications. But while our veterans are waiting, why don't we as a state offer our veterans a loan to bridge them during the period of time that that veteran benefit application is pending? Why don't we get that done? Far too many of our veterans are involved in our criminal justice system, and often for reasons beyond their control and because of lack of understanding of some of the challenges that our veterans face. So why don't we do what a number of other states have done? Let's create veterans treatment courts. So instead of incarcerating veterans, let's use that system to connect veterans to the services that they need. One out of every seven homeless are veterans. So as we make continued investments in our affordable housing and workforce housing programs, let's set aside a percentage to make sure that no veteran in the state of Maryland is homeless on any night in the state of Maryland. We've done a lot, but we've got our work cut out for us whether it's providing employment opportunities, protecting retirement income, or connecting veterans with services, we have a sacred obligation to our veterans, an obligation that we will fulfill. So from one veteran to another, and on behalf of everyone on this platform today, let me say thank you very much for your service. May God bless you, and God bless the great state of Maryland and, and this country. Thank you. This current network of support for our veterans all exists because of Dennis Smith's vision. Dennis is a hero for heroes. And he has always kept the best interests of those who have served and continue to serve in the forefront during his career with a VA that spans over 40 years. Please welcome Mr. Dennis Smith. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
and distinguished guest here on the stage with me. But more importantly, good morning to our honored veterans. It's my privilege and honor to join you this morning on behalf of the VA Maryland Healthcare System. I would like to thank Mayor Rawlings Blake for inviting me to be a part of today's veterans ceremony and to recognize our most treasured men and women, our nation's veterans. I would also like to thank and recognize all the veteran patients, volunteers, employees here in the audience from the VA Maryland Healthcare System. And I'd like them to stand there over here on, on my right, your left. This dedicated group of individuals is the heart and soul of the VA Maryland Healthcare System. And I thank each of you for your service and devotion. But I also can't leave out Senator Cardin and Senator Mikulski and the rest of our Maryland delegation. Without them, we would not have the support we need to run our hospital. So, Senator Cardin, thank you very much. They are part of our VA Maryland healthcare team. Do you know, for over 230 years, our brave men and women have underwritten the freedom our freedom by their duty, honor, and selfless service in the United States forces. Today, in communities around the country, Americans are recognizing those who have served. Because of the courage and commitment necessary to defend this great nation, our service men and women and our veterans have made an all-volunteer armed forces the most respected in the world. It is easy to forget the United States is more than just a place. It is actually an idea forged by the collective genius of a small group of idealistic men whose vision shaped a nation that cherishes freedom and where citizens pledge to their flag. These ideals are manifest in the diversity and resolve of our people. Throughout our history, service men and women have demonstrated strength, resolve, persevering our freedom through service and sacrifice. Thus, it's become our duty to support our troops and our veterans. Many of our veterans return home mirrored in a struggle to readjust to civilian life after multiple tours and, and an unprecedented amount of time spent in a combat zone. Upon return, they face economic insecurity, invisible wounds like post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury, and depression. Others may return to legal, family, work, and social problems, or perhaps physical loss, like the loss of a limb, or blindness, or something more physical. Our nation's veterans need tremendous help to readjust to civilian life, reconnecting with their families, finding grateful and meaningful employment, and maintaining a sense of pride and dignity for their achievements. We must remember they possess the courage, pride, and determination, and dedication to duty, integrity, all qualities needed to serve our nation as well as soldiers. Let's celebrate this Veterans Day but let's, not, but let's also honor our nation's veterans by proactively welcoming them, welcoming them home and renewally return, and the newly return from deployment around the world by acknowledging the sacrifices of veterans from generations, from today's generations and generations past. Retired Army General Colin Powell once said, our veterans, on Veterans Day, we put out our flags, cheer in marches at, at, at parades, and go to tributes. 
But when you wake up the next day, remember, it is still Veterans Day for our veterans and will be every day of their life. At the VA Maryland Health Care System, every day is Veterans Day. We proudly serve veterans from World War II through to, to, to today's deployment around the globe, ranging in age from 21 to 107. It is our honor and privilege to serve these American heroes by providing quality and compassionate health care. On this Veterans Day, we pause to thank our veterans for their service as we renew our covenant between America and the men and women who protect and defend her and us. On behalf of VA Maryland Healthcare System, I'd like to thank all the veterans and active duty service men and women here with us today and throughout the state for your selfless service to this great nation. Thank you. Joining us today on behalf of Senator Barbara Mikulski is her Deputy Projects Director, Justin Hayes. Please join me and welcome him as he reads a message from the Senator. Thank you, Alan, and I want to say thank you to all the veterans here today. I was uh, particularly proud to see the 555th Paratroop Infantry Battalion uh, represented in the parade route as the grandson of a member of the 82nd Airborne uh, who has been to Fort Benning and has seen the jump tower. I'm particularly impressed and, and proud to see them represented here today. And I don't know where they are in the crowd, but, but thank you in particular for your service. Uh, and I know what, what uh, a difficult time it was uh, in, in that time period um, with the politics, the unfortunate politics of the time. So I, I want to say thank you in, in, in part specifically to that 555th Paratroop Infantry Battalion. Uh, the message I have to present from Senator Barbara Mikulski reads as follows. In an age characterized by discontent and conflict, we gather today on this historic day. Veterans Day originated as Armist Day on November 11, 1919, the first anniversary of the end of World War I. Since then, every year during the 11th month on the 11th day at the 11th hour, Patriotic Americans like yourselves have suspended their normal day-to-day -day activities and responsibilities to commemorate the end of a great war and indeed all wars since. But as we all now know, peace is hard won and difficult to maintain. So in 1954, the name of Armistice Day was changed by Congress and President Eisenhower to Veterans Day so that we may pay homage to all of our veterans who have served in many conflicts since World War I. Veterans demonstrated their ability to work as a team. In many instances, their lives depended on it. They set the bar high for all of us to learn to cooperate with one another. Indeed, the hallmark of our nation's military is their working together toward the common goal of defending civil liberties at home and human rights abroad. Today, we rededicate ourselves to the love of country, commitment to duty, and zest for life that characterizes all veterans and military families. That's why I am committed to working with the VA to ensure that veterans get the medical care that they need and deserve. And I won't stop fighting until this current backlog is blown away. Promises made should be promises kept. The people of Maryland and the United States of America are grateful for the sacrifice of our veterans and will always honor them. For you and for me, every day is Veterans Day. God bless you all, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard the clock strike 11. It's a little early. But since the bells have been struck, in honor of our fallen brethren, the veterans who have given all made that last sacrifice, wrote a check to the United States in their blood. Please pause with me now for a moment of silence.
Thank you very much. And before we forget, please join me in thanking the Western High School Choir and the Police Department Choir for their singing today. <laughs> Lieutenant General H. Stephen Blum joins us today as our keynote speaker. Although he is, it says here, although he is officially retired, he stays active touring the country speaking and advocating for veterans' issues. Steve Blum is retired like I'm retired. Many years from now, I can see him being greeted by St. Peter at the pearly gates, at which time General Blum will say, I wasn't finished yet. Prior to retirement, in quotes, he served as Deputy Commander, United States Northern Command, and was the first National Guard officer to serve as a Deputy Combatant Commander. General Blum also served as chief of the National Guard Bureau. In this role, he was the senior uniformed National Guard officer responsible for formulating, developing, and coordinating policy, affecting more than half a million Army and National Guard personnel. Appointed by the president, he served as the principal advisor to the secretary and chief of staff of the Army, and the secretary and chief of staff of the Air Force. Earlier in his career, General Blum served as Assistant Adjutant General for Army, Maryland National Guard. In addition, he served as the Commanding General for Multinational Division North, Stabilization Force 10, in Operation Joint Forge in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Let's pause for another moment. The eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our keynote speaker, Lieutenant General H. Stephen Blum. Thank you. What a great place, what a great day, and what a great event. And I would be very remiss if I didn't recognize our mayor. Our Lieutenant Governor and Tiger Davis, these are elected officials that I'll talk about in a few minutes that really, and you'll understand what I'm talking about, walk the walk when it comes to veterans. So let's give them a big hand for the solid support that they show you every day when it isn't Veterans Day because to them every day is Veterans Day. I'd also like to recognize in the crowd today all the Army, Navy, we call them sailors, where I come from, the Airmen and Women, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, Marines, and the Coast Guard and women. Whether you're in active duty or you're in the reserves or the National Guard, you're veterans all. And I'm very proud of to call myself a veteran and to stand amongst you and having served with many of you. What Alan Walden did not tell you is that I started my military career as a private 
and I was instilled with the right stuff by a guy named Wilson Thornton, an alumni at a Melvin Cade Armory who helped form the first Special Forces unit in the Maryland Army National Guard. Wilson, if I screw this up, it's all your fault. Today we mark the 59th year that America has celebrated Veterans Day. You've heard World War I was supposed to be the war that was going to end all wars. It was also the war to make the world safe for democracy. We all know how that worked out. And we need to remember that because there'll be others who will optimistically project that we are coming to the end of conflict and the need to be vigilant and to defend our way of life, our communities, our state, and our nation. That first world war was almost 100 years ago. And sadly, it was not the last war inflicted on mankind. Reg regrettably, the world is really no safer for democracy than it was before World War I, and arguably, we are almost in as dangerous a place now as we were before World War I and World War II. So the choices we make and our elected officials make are extraordinarily important in determining what will happen in the 21st century, particularly with the veterans that are represented by these junior ROTC groups and youth challenge programs that I'm looking out at. Thank you for being here, and thank you for honoring today's veterans. Today, we remember the armistice between the Allied nations and Germany that went into effect, as Alan Walden said, on the 11th hour, on the 11th day, on the 11th month. That was the day back in 1918 when the guns went silent. For that reason, then our president, Woodrow Wilson, called for the people of America to reflect on the heroism of those who died and be grateful for their victory. They did this by proclaiming November the 11th, 1919, as the first commemoration of what was called then Armistice Day, because that's what it was commemorating, the armistice between Germany and the Allies. Some 36 years later, another president of the United States, President Dwight D. Eisenhower, himself a little bit of a veteran, issued a proclamation in 1954 which stated that the intent of Armistice Day was to pay the appropriate homage to veterans of all wars who have contributed so much to the preservation of this nation. Following the Korean War, which was not forgotten to General Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, he officially named Armistice Day Veterans Day. And that's how Veterans Day became to be known as what we have celebrated for the last 59 years. Those being honored today on Veterans Day, that's all of you that have ever served or are serving now, are men and women who offered themselves basically as shields for America to keep its citizens from war and from keeping war from reaching our front door. We did that very successfully until about September the 11th, 2001, when suddenly we saw a different kind of warfare in a place that we never thought we'd see it. Throughout our nation's history, our veterans, these men and women, experienced trauma, endured pain, suffered periods of stark terror, witnessed the dull, mind-numbing boredom of some of the assignments that we had to perform but were absolutely necessary. And they witnessed the worst horrors of man. They also saw some pretty bad injustices. Fighting for a country to preserve rights that they really didn't have full use of. 
That's an extraordinary citizen that will lay their life on the line when they don't even get all of the fruits that they're fighting to defend. But because of that, we've made some remarkable progress in a lifetime of many of you sitting here on the front row. Not this front row, this front row. <laughs> and because of that, and because of that labor, and because of that sacrifice, we can now live and work in peace and freedom in this country. Our veterans are truly the torchbearers of our freedom and democracy. This country has the only armed forces in the entire world where the members of its military take an oath of allegiance, not to a king, not to a monarch, not to a religion, not to any political party or even political leader. They take an oath to support and defend an idea of government embodied in a document. That document is called the United States Constitution. Our veterans have sworn to protect this nation against all enemies, foreign or domestic. Our Constitution places the civilian elected leaders of our government over the military. We were the first nation in modern times to do this, and that makes us unique as Americans. And you veterans have maintained that obligation and that pledge and that sacred covenant since day one of the ratification of our Constitution. As you probably can tell, I'm a little bit proud of our veterans. I'm particularly proud of Maryland veterans who have rendered their extraordinary service in every single campaign in our nation's history, bar none. Marylanders marched from Frederick, Baltimore, Southern Maryland, on foot up to Boston to form the first Continental Army for a man named George Washington. And it was George Washington who said, you can measure how future generations will respond and serve their country by how veterans are treated coming back from the war. He recognized that our first commander in chief, our first president, and the first commander of our armed forces before we were even a nation recognized that how we treated our veterans has a lot to do with a nation like the United States on, on the, pro, the, pro, the, pro, the um, proclivity of those young men and women seated behind you to serve and be veterans in the future. Marylanders fought in every war, and if you look at the flag on top of that tower up there with the 15 stars, you're getting a view pretty much like Francis Scott Key got on that morning in September 1814 when he wrote a poem that became our national anthem. We're about as far away from the flag as he was then, and it's approximately the size of the storm flag that was flying over Fort McHenry. Pretty amazing that the fact that we remain the United States of America had to do with citizen soldiers that came from right where you're sitting, Baltimore. Citizens, militia, basically defeated the greatest land army on the planet at the time. This was the British army that defeated Napoleon on the continent of Europe, and they came here and thought they were going to make quick work of us. But they made a mistake. They came to Baltimore and they met resistance they didn't expect. They met resilience they didn't expect. And when they got to the foot of Hampstead Hill over in Patterson Park, they looked up there and said, not sure the pain is worth the gain. And they turned around and walked back to the ships and that was the last we saw of them. Marylanders go out of their way to get into harm's way, it seems because when the Civil War happened, we ended up with Marylanders fighting on both sides. We literally had brothers fighting brothers at Gettysburg. And since then, they've been in every single campaign and distinguished themselves with their performance on the battlefield, and not only on the battlefield, but in some peacekeeping operations and stability operations that really said more about 
what is right with this country than any of our diplomats and State Department can. It was the American soldier walking around on the ground in places like Bosnia, Kosovo, the Sinai, Afghanistan, and Iraq during the stability operations. And when they looked at people like Linda Singh and realized that when she came home, she wasn't going to be a professional soldier. She was going back to her family and her children and her job, and that she was only there as a volunteer to protect them. She was not there as a professional soldier as a, as a career. But when she was needed, she was there, and so were tens of thousands others like her, including the lieutenant governor. So that's why I'm so proud to be here on Veterans Day, because this is a first-class event, and second of all, because Maryland has always produced first-class veterans and always will, because I'm looking into the eyes of those young men and women out there, and they got everything that we ever had, and maybe more. So today, our veterans are the reason our children can live without fear of having their innocence stripped away by extremist organizations or terrorists or enemies to our nation, whether they come from overseas or they come from within. We must all continue to honor our fallen patriots and our wounded warriors by supporting their families and helping veterans reintegrate into our communities. And some of the things that the Lieutenant Governor brought up are gonna be excellent, excellent bridges for veterans to come back for that reintegration. Veterans, both past and current, I'd ask you all to stand. First of all, it'll warm you up, and it'll wake some of you up. Ladies and gentlemen, look around you. These are what a veteran looks like. They represent the very best of America. Well, he, I hear somebody yelling, holding a dog, that only 7% of our population are veterans. It's worse than that. That's the way it used to be. Going forward, if we have the rate of participation that we have right now, it will ultimately be less than a half of 1%, because today, less than only, less than half of 1% of our population, one in 200 Americans wears the uniform of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, or the Coast Guard. That's all. It's a very, very small group of people carrying a very, very heavy burden. So, for them, and thank you for that, we must all ensure that Veterans Day remains more than just a day where special sales at shopping malls or midnight madness sales at local car dealerships are celebrated. The real significance of Veterans Day is that it gives all of us the opportunity to remember the sacrifice, the commitment, and the service, and the valor of those that are not only no longer with us, but for those who are still with us, we value their dedication and their commitment to service st standing forward today and going forward tomorrow. All of these veterans are worthy of your support. And if we do our part, I am absolutely confident our veterans will ensure the United States of America remains the land of the free and the home of the brave forever. Thank you for inviting me to speak today. God bless our veterans and God bless the United States of America. As we come together today, it's important to remember we are still a nation at war. Thousands of U.S. military personnel are currently serving overseas to protect us and our interests. Although Veterans Day is a holiday to celebrate the living, we pause and remember those who have given the ultimate sacrifice so that we can be sitting and standing here today free, 
unified as Americans. Maryland has lost one soldier since we last came together on Veterans Day. Please join me in remembering Captain Sarah M. Knutson, aged 27, of Eldersburg, Maryland, killed March 11, 2013.
The armistice of 1918 ended the terrible slaughter of World War I. The U.S. had experienced the deaths of over 116,000 men, plus many more who were physically and mentally disabled, severely needing ongoing care. For one moment, just for one moment, on that 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, November 11th, 1918, the world agreed that World War I must be the war to end all wars. There was joy everywhere. Churches rang their bells like you heard them ringing a few minutes ago, some 11 times, to mark the signing of the armistice. Didn't work out. But maybe, just maybe, someday on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the bells will ring and signal, in the words of the Old Testament, that all people have beat their swords into plows and their spears into pruning hooks, and nations shall not make war against nation, nor shall there be war anymore. Pastor Jefferson, if you would please lead us in the final blessing. Let us stand that we might receive the final blessing. We thank God for the opportunity to gather to honor our veterans. We thank God for their dedication to duty, honor, and service. We place them in God's hands as we ask the Lord to guard and guide them as their lives unfold. Continue to bless them. Continue to bless us. Continue to bless our beloved nation and help us to acknowledge you and to look to you as the source of our health and strength. Abide with us now as we depart this place, knowing that wherever it is that life shall take us, we shall always be in your presence. Amen.